Yeah, very good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Devanand, consultant spine surgeon from Stavya Spine Hospital, here to share my e-poster on OLIF initial learning curve and complications. As you all know, OLIF is a minimal invasive spine procedure performed through an anterior oblique trajectory. The results have been promising. However, learning curve appears steep and complications for a beginner are always a challenge to take up and continue a new technique in practice. So at our center, we have prospectively analyzed all the cases which we have started up doing OLIF, the initial problems faced for a beginner and the perioperative complications. So this was a case of KH1 degenerative scoliosis where we have done L23 level OLIF, uh, where we had good disc height and foraminal height restored and the placement looks good. We had some problem with initially uh, with level with uh, time as well as the uh, approach for the first case, which we have overcome. The second case, there was L23 stenosis where we had difficulty in exposure. The psoas kept coming in the dilator and later realized that key incision was a little too posterior. And as the arrow mark shows, the pin was too close to the end plate where it was loosened while we were reaming for the uh, disc. The third problem which we encountered was the cage was pushed more to the right, which we did not uh, realize and once we saw the AP x-ray it was more towards the right side which was very difficult to retrieve as it was a snugly fitting cage. So we made it a point that always check the AP 2D image while you hammer in the cage. This was a case of L23 lytic listosis which we have attempted in a single position surgery. Uh, we had a little difficulty while putting the screws in the same position, the uh, lateral position and the second thing which happened was even after the careful dispreparation, the cage was a little posteriorly placed and this patient ended up with a mild weakness of the posterior thigh with paresthesias. Uh, they, uh, she improved over a period of three to four weeks. She became walking and she's absolutely fine now. This was a case of double level uh, stenosis with vegetal arthritis. As you can see, there were irregular end plates at the uh, L4 inferior end plate and the second cage, it was put little more anterior and we ended up putting the cage anteriorly and the posterior disc height and the foraminal height did not open up. This patient has mild uh, uh, paresthesias in the thigh which improved a period of one week. So overall our results were we have operated eight patients and total of nine levels, one male and seven females with a mean age of 46 years. All the patient had supplemental posterior surgery as we were in the beginning stage and we were not comfortable with more of MIS, uh, all over MIS. And levels operated were three levels of L23, four levels of L34, and two levels of L45. Mean OT time for the OLIF procedure only was around 145 minutes. The radiation exposure was 406 ligairi. Uh, mean blood loss was around 100 ml. There was one case subsidence in the end plate and one patient had post-op neurodeficit, which recovered over a period of three to four weeks. We did not encounter any vascular injuries. Although OLIF gives promising results, early case selection, intraoperative steps need to be planned and executed in order to avoid major complications. Thank you.